Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, Joey McGuire makes an addition to his Red Raider football staff. And Mark Adams and the Red Raiders are road dogs as they head to take on the University of Texas, which means we're hoping to get weird in Austin. We get to it all next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Thanks for joining us once again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online's got you covered this season, all seasons, with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan, and today's episode starts. With Texas Tech football news, as you're hearing this, I've probably had some time as a Tech fan to digest this news. That is an addition to Joey McGuire's staff in the form of Justin Juice Johnson. He comes by way of Baylor, but has made some rounds, Chris, in the great state, both as a player at Houston and elsewhere on other college staffs in Texas. Also spent some time at Kansas. And if a nickname is anything, We got a winner here with Juice, right? But what else is there to know about Coach Johnson, uh, who seems like there's a lot of excitement around having in Lubbock? Yeah, I, you know, Casey, I think uh, just kind of rewinding a bit, I I think this is somebody that Joey uh, targeted initially, uh, like when he got this job uh, at Texas Tech. And I I think, uh, I, I think, Coach Johnson's wife has a really good job. She's, I think, a doctor, and I think there was some contractual stuff, and so it just wasn't the right timing, and that's really what opened the door for uh, for Emmett Jones. And then Texas Tech, obviously, you know, Zach Kitley, you know, w- w- was interested in working with Emmett Jones again because they'd done it uh, in a prior stint. Uh, but uh, so, so I guess what I'm saying is, is that, you know, Joey ends up ultimately getting somebody that he was interested in to begin with. And obviously coach Johnson can, um, he can coach, you know, a variety of skill positions on offense. He's going to be tasked with uh, uh, the receivers uh, at Texas tech. But I think what most people will tell you is if, if, if he wasn't, he was in the very small conversation of the best recruiters on that Baylor staff. And I think it's it's fascinating that you I mean Emmett Jones you know officially departs and then you basically hire Coach Johnson. I mean I don't know what was it a day thirty six hours later. It's like not only is it done, it's officially announced and uh, away you go. So I think that's pretty telling too on how focused in on on each side of that equation was and that okay we want you and hey I want this and let's get it done and there's no because sometimes this stuff it takes a while you're working on contract or maybe the timing's not right or whatever the case may be but it it didn't take long for an an offer to be extended and for one to be accepted in in this case yeah that's exactly right uh coach Johnson will be assistant head coach passing game coordinator in addition to the title of wide receivers coach, which is kind of interesting and entertaining to me, Chris, because you also, in addition to an assistant head coach, have an associate head coach in the form of Kenny Perry. So (laughs) there's a lot to sort out there, but I'm curious when it comes to these titles and things like this for coach Johnson, does he come in immediately as one of the more well compensated members of the staff? Because I know it, I know you're trying to take care of guys whenever you get into that kind of title territory. You know, some of these things didn't even exist as titles like 20 years ago. Uh, So I get what it's about, but I really wonder um, kind of within the grand scheme of things, does he come in near maybe the top of that list or where do you think he fits in? I'm I'm curious uh, to know this myself. Uh, I think um, it, here's what I can tell you. I, I think it wasn't cheap. Uh, I think Emmett Jones was making five. Okay, so don't don't just pin me down on these numbers exactly, but I'm I'm, I'm pretty close to it. If I'm if I'm not dead on, Emmett Jones I think was making about half a million a year here at Texas Tech. I think Kale Gundy 
was making $700,000 last year, a year to coach receivers at, at Oklahoma. So I'm guessing Emmett Jones got a bump up there. And then I, I'm guessing that I, I I'm, I'm told that it wasn't cheap to get coach Johnson and that Baylor didn't exactly just let him walk without, you know, at least having that conversation. So I'm, I'm guessing that coach Johnson's going to be, you know, to try to answer your question, I, I, I bet uh, it, it's – I don't think he's going to be the highest paid guy on the staff or anything or not like coordinator type stuff. Right. But I bet it's it's in that, you know, somewhere between 400 and 600. Again, that's just me guessing. Maybe, maybe you know, 350. I don't I – don't, he's not he, – he's not a tenured guy. He hasn't been doing this a long, long time. But he is an, uh, clearly an up-and-comer and extremely well-respected from a recruiting standpoint and in the Metroplex. Uh, so – I'm 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 kind of hitting around like a, a general area, but I, I don't know what ultimately he settled in at. But I just know it wasn't it, it, you. You didn't get him cheap. I, I know that. But again, it, it's all about relationships. And when you have a guy that you know, because there's there's some of these guys that came here from Baylor that they worked with him and they they all know him and and Joey knows him, and so that that's worth something to people. Like I want to know what I'm getting. Sure. Yeah, from a chemistry standpoint, a personality standpoint. Um, you know, and, you know, it's not like he's coached in Zach's offense before. So, you know, in some ways he's going to have to be, you know, it's like you hear the term coach, the coaches, you know, he's going to have to be kind of taught, you know, in some ways, Hey, this is what we want. This is kind of how we do things. But as far as the, um, you know, the, the, the general chemistry and the fit, I think it makes all kinds of sense, but I, I, I bet it wasn't, you know, necessarily cheap. And I bet he got, a two or three year contract uh, would be my guess, which used to be very foreign. We've talked about some of that stuff before that used to be very foreign for Texas tech or really colleges in general to give assistant coaches, you know, multi-year contracts, but that's the, that's the way the game is being played these days. If you want to take care of your people and protect yourself while doing so, uh, then that's the reality of it. Like, here's just something else uh i don't know why and the 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 dates i i don't i don't know all that but like emmett jones technically would have owed more money to texas tech had he left prior to january the first i believe than what he would have owed them after leaving that date uh the buyout drops and things like that not that he's gonna have to pay any of that money that's typically the school is is doing all of that but that's it's just there's a lot that goes on in the contractual game with with football assistants specifically. Good grief! Another first of the month issue. At least it wasn't <laughs> April first this time yeah. around. I guess I can saddle with a one to one this time instead of a four to one. Uh, Chris, before we move on, do you think much like we talked about with Coach Jones, uh, his departure and then potential roster uh, impact as a result of that on yesterday's show? Think there's anything to look out for as far as Coach Johnson's departure from a recently successful, a recently championship football program in Waco. It wasn't the most recent season, but not long ago they had conference hardware to show for their efforts. Is there anything to keep an eye on uh, from a player personnel standpoint? I guess I should ask in Waco already, or maybe some guys in the recruiting uh, pipeline that haven't hit the college level yet. Yeah, I, I think more so I, w- I would just rule out anything uh, coming from Baylor, I guess. Uh, I, I think the problem there is that Tech just doesn't have a lot of spots, I guess. And that's really it's a it's a numbers problem. But you, you never know, um, yeah. especially when there's there's relationships and and trust and, and just things like that. Uh, because I think there was some speculation about Richard Reese, man. Is he going to, is he going to follow? He's the stud running back at Baylor was a big 12 freshman of the year. Uh, would he follow, you know, his coach uh, to Texas tech, even though, you know, it's not like coach Johnson is going to actually coach him. I mean, that's, that's what Kenny Perry coaches the running backs. Um, but you know, so people already start, you know, connecting dots and all those. And I don't think that's going to happen, but I wouldn't rule that out. However, I think that your your question about future, uh, you know, college players, I think that's much more where you'll see the immediate uh, feel for for Coach Jones on on uh, how how he recruits and who he who he's got relationships with and and all those kinds of things. There's some very highly ranked uh, skill players in the state of Texas and elsewhere that have already built a really good relationship with them that have already started to mention Texas Tech after his hiring. So uh, are we? And, 
Yeah. Are we talking so. this go around by like February? Or are we talking a year off? I, I well, uh, yeah. Well, I guess technically not. Not this February. I don't think you're going to sign anybody this February because I think you're full. I mean, you basically yeah. have added your full recruiting class uh, between now and you know. And, and again, could they could they add one more, two more? Again, wouldn't rule that out. However, I I think that the next cycle, which it's going to happen quicker than you realize because it, it all, all these kids are on official visits like here in two, three or four months uh, during basketball season, during during kind of late spring or, or even in June. They're all on these official the, the recruiting calendar is so backwards to the way I grew up with it. In my head <laughs> right. it remembers it the way it, you know, you, you'd bring kids in for football games in the fall and then, be, you know, in, in, in January and even early February was such a heavy recruiting season. And then it was like, you know, in early February, it's like, okay, the world stops. We're going to focus on this for a couple of days and then away we go. But now it, uh, you know, it all happens in early summer and then, and then early De- or mid December is when they all put pen to paper. So I, to answer your question, that's when you'll feel, I think his addition more, more gotcha. so than anything else, but I wouldn't rule out somebody from Baylor uh, coming this way just because that's how, that's how the sport works these days. But Again, I don't necessarily know if uh, other than potentially Jerron Bradley, which I don't think that looks likely now, I don't think anybody is going from Texas Tech to Oklahoma to follow Coach Jones. But again, you, you don't rule anything out. Gotcha. All right. Well, glad to have uh, that conversation wrapped up fairly quickly as far as this little shuffle here um, as it pertains to these guys on the staff of Joey McGuire. And you've got a guy that um, I think you had to really exert some effort to get, which speaks highly of him and also someone if for no other reason you might like to have him. Lovick has history, obviously, with your head coach and some recently successful Big 12 football. So we'll see what is to come. We're sticking with Red Raider football coming up next. Getting back to the roster. Sincerely. Up ahead on Locked On Texas Tech. But first, today's episode brought to you by Bet online, the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get those odds right now. Trends for every professional and amateur league all around the world. Pro football, college football when it's coming back around, college hoops, NBA, whatever your flavor. They've got it all covered at Bet Online. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your info, keep up with your events, your teams on game day so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more with bet online where the game starts glad to have you along for the run on locked on texas tech on the locked on podcast network with chris level i'm casey Cowan. thanks for joining us on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts do subscribe you make our mothers proud when you do that on youtube so you never miss an episode appreciate all of those who have uh, brought the test drive to an end and have joined the locked on texas tech fam damley Uh, we're talking red raider football here for a moment further before we switch gears and get to texas tech basketball mark adams and the red raiders have a big one coming up on the road from our state's capital as they'll take on the university of Texas, and we're getting to that setting the table coming up in just a moment. But Chris, we've got a few more bits of Red Raider news here to process. This involving uh, players, as we were talking about, in addition to the staff a moment ago, and Justin Johnson. Uh, now we switch gears to a couple of guys who are seeking fortunes elsewhere in a couple of different circumstances, both sides of the football. And I guess we'll start uh, with one of those pass catchers that we saw actually. Make some highlight real catches. Just didn't see them all that frequently this season in Trey Cleveland. Yeah, you know Trey was uh, Trey was a guy that uh, I, I'm not surprised to see him like leaving. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised had he stayed. I think that was kind of one of those. You know, I, he he definitely was not like pushed out or anything. Uh, you know and. Uh, but I also think that Trey was able to read the room and that understand, hey, man, I, I'd kind of like to be a focus. That's not going to happen for me here. And I've got, you know, limited eligibility left. I think he actually technically has two years left. He's just graduated, but he's got two years to play with the B factor in the, I think the COVID year and all that crap. It's hard to keep up with all that stuff. But 
Um, I just think, I, you know, and, and, and from what I've heard, he handled everything with complete class and just wanted to be focused on more and basically was willing to admit, you know, that that's probably not going to happen for me here. And, you know, but I think uh, was upfront about it, was above board about it. And, you know, the, the thing about Trey that I'll remember uh, this year was that he made several big catches uh, at weird times in games that you know but but he also there was never any run after the catch there's like it's a 49 yard reception and it's like he he's tackled right there they were all contested catches and none of them were for a touchdown okay so that's what what i remember from his season this year is there was a couple of just like i said monster grabs that he makes that were, were big but trey was never the fastest guy and he wasn't uh, somebody that you know i think if you're it's not fair to to say this but this is just the reality of it he just had a hard time staying healthy kind of in and out of the lineup always had something nagging kind of deal just could never like take the next step and and again i i feel like i'm saying being negative about him i'm just kind of like that that's my what i would say about him is just the player but the the person phenomenal human uh had a great attitude all the time and, um, and, and in fact, uh, Dre McCray may end up taking that open scholarship, if that makes sense, uh, or, or Nehemiah Martinez ends up taking that available scholarship, uh, that, that, that is vacated by, by Trey Cleveland. I don't know if you're going to, if you're on the lookout for another edition, but we'll, we'll kind of see what that looks like, but yeah. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Trey goes to play for like Eric Morris, uh, Houston, if he ends up maybe at playing for Sonny Cumbie at Louisiana Tech, if he ends up going to play for Coach Trailer at UTSA, somewhere along those lines, and I think he could he could play and play quite a bit. Yeah, I wish him the best. Really had some exciting plays that he made, as you described there, but wasn't able to really crack through uh, into that next level of consistently being that kind of impact player in the Big 12 Conference. Um, and you mentioned – uh, Nehemiah Martinez, Dennis the Menace Wilburn saw them probably out there being uh, highlighted by their head coach and uh, by the program now put on scholarship, Chris. And uh, these seem like no-brainers, obviously, and guys that I think all Red Raider fans will be excited to see rewarded for the impact they made this year, particularly Dennis Wilburn, who came in and I guess, tell me if I'm wrong, was your best offensive lineman last year. Yeah, well, you you know what my thoughts are on on Dennis Wilburn because I, I I'm I'm willing to tell you that I think that you know the argument can be made that not only was he your best offensive lineman, he may have been your offensive MVP. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you can you, you could make a few cases for some other guys, but I think that you know when you look at you know w- the position that he played and he's the best at it and of the group and the most consistent and. Because I, 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 I just say this from the standpoint of what if you didn't have him? What would it have looked like then? And I don't even want to think about it. And I think that, <laughs> um, you know, and I, and I think that they're trying to do right by Dennis in that one, they put him on scholarship, but two, they're trying to get him in more of his natural position next year, which is it, it going to be one of those guard spots. And I think that he will really excel. Um, and he could have a future at the next level if he continues to progress like he did. Uh, under Stephen Hamby and Zach Kitley this year. But, yeah, and then Nehemiah, man. I mean, what a great story. You know, he was uh, – you know, he played at Lubbock Cooper, and then he uh, – you know, he was, at, I think, New Deal before that and, and played at Lubbock Cooper. And then he goes to Air Force, and they, they're running that triple option. He's kind of one of those wing backs, which is kind of that, like, tight end slash kind of running back and just kind of a, that, that real versatile position or whatever. And he just they wanted to get back closer to home and he's just done nothing but be tough and make plays since he got back here. And, and I, I was thrilled to see him rewarded. Those are no brainer scholarships right there. Like if you have them to give and that's where people are like, why don't we have more room? Why can't we go get this guy in the portal or this guy in the portal? Well, you got to take care of people like Dennis Wilford and Nehemiah Martinez because they're bird in the hand guys, man. I know what I'm getting. They're great. You know, they've worked toward it. They deserve it. Uh, They're, they're, uh, you know, great locker room guys, great teammates, and they're good players. And so I was really glad to see that. Yeah, no doubt about it. Congrats. Congratulations to uh, the menace and uh, 
little voice, my guy Nehemiah Martinez. I know you conveniently left out the fact that he's the son of a little Phil Wildcat. Don't give New oh, Deal and Cooper. My, my don't give New Deal and Cooper all the credit. Uh, his father was a singer that went by voice, not the voice, just voice. So I like to go little voice uh, from my guy Nehemiah. And uh, I was trying to pull it up really quickly. I know Wilburn has one year only remaining, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah, so- he's unfortunately – He's, you know, yeah, I, I, and I think his, I think this next year of his is kind of like maybe even his COVID or like yeah. one, one, of, you know, it's just some extra year. But yeah, you're just gonna get one more year, and I think Nehemiah's got like two or three left. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. looking forward to seeing those guys continue to make an impact for Texas Tech, and congratulations to them for being put on scholarship. And before we're getting out of the football realm and getting to Mark Adams and the Red Raiders from Austin, sincere. Massey is a name that enters the transfer portal, Chris. And I wonder if just given, I don't know, some context and some recent comments from uh, head coach Joey McGuire that were kind of complimentary of the guys, is this unexpected, a surprise? What do you make of Massey entering the portal? Well, you know, Massey is a guy that was one of the very first commitments that Joey got. He's a Cedar Hill guy. He's one of the very first guys that you heard the name of whenever Joey got the job. Um, he's an enormous individual. Um, I, I, I think, you know, I think he was, uh, a couple of years away from actually contributing and playing. I I don't know if he, you know, if he truly loves football. I mean, that, that's speculation on my part of if you, you hear things and, and all that. And so, um, you know, I, th- there's going to be more of this, uh, like kind of these younger guys that maybe either see the writing on the wall or just kind of wonder, man, do I do, is this what I want to do? Is this where I want to be? And, and even though most fans, cause I mean, I'd be willing to, to guess that Casey, most fans listening to us don't really know who the heck, uh, sincere Massey even is because he didn't play it all this year. Um, he was a, he was a freshman, um, and he may have snuck out there for a game or two, but I mean, he was t- technically, he was red shirting this year. Yeah. He's like I said, he's, he's like in the 350 pound category. He's a big, big guy probably needed to drop a little bit. I, I, I saw, you know, last yesterday afternoon, I guess it was that he'd offered, got an offer uh, by Southern, you know, and so I don't, I don't know at what level we're looking at, uh, on, on where he'll end up. But again, it was a Cedar Hill guy. Joey knew what he was getting and, you know, but Hey, it, it didn't work out and there'll be more guys like this. This is just kind of how it happens. Cause I, I think if you remember to Joey's first recruiting class, some of those guys already committed, some of them, he added to it. So, you know, I mean, you know, some of those kids kind of were, were committed to the deal without really knowing Coach McGuire and staff or whatever. But I think J- Coach McGuire and them were trying to honor his commitment. But this happens to be a guy that Joey, uh, Joey brought on. But, hey, it, it didn't work out. But it's not like it, it affects next year's team or anything like that. And this may, in fact, be Steve Linton's scholarship here. You know, that may be mm. kind of one in one out kind of uh, scenario that Joey's talked about before. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see kind of what that looks like, or if they go have room now to go add another defensive player, we'll see. Like sands through the hourglass. <laughs> These are the days of our college sports <laughs> lives in 2022, man. It's just, uh, it's just a constant shuffle. It seems like, and uh, thoughts and prayers to those who are tasked with managing it all. But uh, man, there is a lot to chew on as, we are early on into this off season and with plenty more to come. So uh, obviously we will have a close look at it here each time it's coming around on locked on Texas tech and coming up ahead. We'll have a closer look at Texas tech hoops as they're back at it against the university of Texas. How in the heck are we going to get this thing headed in the right direction? We'll see if coach level has the answer coming up next on locked on Texas tech. Thanks for making Locked On Texas Tech a part of your day, whenever, wherever, however you're making it happen. We appreciate you on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Subscribe so you never miss an episode. And before we're out of here for the week, Chris, we got to get set for Red Raider basketball because it's not just another one you're rolling out. No, it's an opportunity against someone 
that you really enjoy beating, especially as of late. I know that there's not quite the same tinge to it. And even if there was, could you even think about who's on the other bench because you're a winless conference basketball team right now? Kind of seems like an in-house approach to taking care of business on the road this time around, right? It's it's gut check time uh, for a team trying to get their first conference win in a really tough setting. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, you know, I mean, for, from, you know, like I, I, I can't even imagine what this game would have been like if, if Chris was still the head coach in Austin. Um, but yeah, yeah, obviously the Red Raiders are reeling right now, trying to figure out things. You know, te- Texas is, they're scary good, just to be honest. I mean, their roster is one of the oldest in the, in the country, uh, certainly one of the oldest in the league. They are extremely talented. Um, I think they've, Obviously, dealt with some uh, odd uh, portion of their season here, trying to figure out their the coaching situation, all that stuff. But you know, I mean, c- a couple nights ago, you know, uh, they they are down by 18 points to TCU, and then figure out a way to come back and win that game there at home, uh, playing in a brand new building. Uh, but you know, I mean, when all this stuff happened with with Chris and and, and that incident and everything, I mean, this was the second ranked team in the country. And I think a lot of people felt like this is a national championship contender. And I, I think you can probably back off of that just a little bit because you're not real sure it, how much Rodney Terry is going to change what they're doing and how these kids will be able to lock in and all that stuff because everybody starts taking stock and, okay, how is this going to affect me? Do I still have a job here next year if you're on the staff? Do I still want to be here and play for – coach terry if i'm a player but then there's the immediate in that you know you're just kind of shaking up and all that but that this, this is a scary talented team and if they're focused and locked in i mean look out uh but i think that that focus and being locked in has been a, a bit of a, a tricky proposition for them but you know but, but between uh Tyrese Hunter and Marcus Carr, I mean, it's one of the best guard combos in the league and, and all that. But so that's enough about Texas. I mean, they're, they, they, they're long, they're old, they're, they're, they've got a variety of ways they can score. They've, you know, I, I think since Chris has departed, they, they don't statistically, they're not playing as good a defense. Uh, I mean, and obviously they gave up, you know, what was it, 116 points at Kansas State, which was just wild getting in a track meet with them and then losing that one at home. Uh, but they are capable defensively, but they just have so many different ways they can score. And I'm just curious, though, how this Red Raider team bounces back because, you know, you, you, you've, you've seen the things that Mark has said and, hey, we're going to make some changes. We're not we're going to we're going to play different ways. We're going to do some different things. And, you know, because he, he's just kind of coming at it from the standpoint of, OK, this we got we had three really close games. Then we got blown out and we got punched in the mouth. And so I think that his first reaction after that happened, Casey, was I think this is a good thing because now it will maybe shake us up enough to where we can really dig in and like kind of realize, okay, we were maybe getting by with certain things before, but if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to get worked. And so what those changes are, I, I don't I don't know. Uh, because I, I immediately go to, okay, well, do certain guys play more or play less? Do you start running some different sets or offense? And it's just – it's so late in the game to switch up stuff schematically, uh, and I don't really know what buttons you push on on which players play more or less because you're really playing, you know, pretty much everybody that, that has been available to you. So – I'm kind of fascinated to see it. And if it's a mentality thing, you would hope that a 34 point loss on the road and on, on national TV would, would, would kind of poke at your pride a little bit. Then you'd come out because Texas, I mean, again, if it, it just face value, man, they're good enough to do the same thing to you. If you show up and play like you did the other night, if not beat you worse, because they're more talented than Iowa state is. No doubt. And if 34 points uh, worth of difference between you and an opponent, is not a work, and I, I don't know what is. I mean, you've gone through that, and let's see what you learn from it, I guess. And I, I get kind of confused. When you say Chris Beard, now, is that the Longhorn head coach that called the young, innocent TV assistant a mother effer on TV, and that he was nose-to-nose, or was that a different – was that the? I know there was an incident. There was the guy. No, that was cut. that was uh, Steve Sarkeesian. Oh, that yeah, was that's... another Longhorn head coach, a separate <laughs> Longhorn head coach I losing see what you his did mind. There. Yeah. I don't. I'm just trying to keep up. And <laughs> and this is a coach that had an incident, right? We're not talking about the player that had the assault incident. This is a separate assault. 
<laughs> I just yes. want to this Longhorn police blotter. I mean, newswire just gets so <laughs> damn busy, and that's what comes with operating in a big city. I get it. I'm just trying to keep up out here as a country bumpkin in West Texas. Uh, Chris, I just wonder if I'm Mark Adams, like, where do you begin the process because I, of collecting yourself as a team? You're better than what you showed on the road. I think you were better in general than kind of what you've showed at least consistently so far this season. And I'm wondering, well, actually, I think I know it has to start with little things, right? It can't be yep. like, oh, we got these new sets or we're going to try this new stuff and that'll cure it. No, because what we're seeing right now is red flags in all directions. So it's got to start with some little thing. I, I just don't know where it is. Is it just flat out effort? I want to see you bust an ass or I, I don't know. It's got to be some detail, though, I think that you've got to begin with. Yeah. And, and so I, I think when you look at when you look at Texas Tech as a basketball team this year and you now that we've seen, you know, because they're what, 10 and six. So we've seen 16 games. Uh, that's the body of work that, that, that you've got to this point. Uh, 10 and six and 0 and four in the league. And. I, I think we what we can look at is are are you again I guess I'll just ask this question to you like do you see any one thing that they're really really good at? No. Yeah, and I think okay. So now that we know that, there's nothing to really hang your hat on. So to me, if if Mark Adams is the head coach and 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 his identity is going to be you know defense and all that, to me that's where it has to start. I just think that, you know, I've gotten caught up into like, okay, what 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 are they trying to accomplish on offense or what what's the, you know, who, if you need a bucket at the end of the game, who do you go to? I mean, I, I've had all these conversations in my head. We've talked about some of this stuff. But really, with, with Mark at the helm, that's where this has to start is that you've got to get that part locked up and get it much better at it, and that's so you can hang your hat on something. You know, like and whether that. it is yeah. the yeah, whether it is the little things like, you know, uh, we, we've got to take more charges in games. We've got to be better with our rotations and we've got to defend the three point line better. Or that's the collection of things that I think that you've got to improve on. And I think the offense will come because if you're good on defense or elite on defense like they were last year, you can create enough offense in transition to go win games in this league if you're, again, a really good or elite on defense. So, to me, if he's the head coach, that's where it has to start, you know. Uh, I agree. And, and, yeah, that's just where that's where the conversation begins, in my opinion. And then you kind of can build off of it from there because I think they've given up some points off underneath out-of-bounds plays a little bit. They're not necessarily scoring on some of their inbounds plays. I mean, you can nitpick on some stuff. You can talk about – you know, executing on offense or maybe pulling the trigger too early in shot clocks. And there's a variety of different things to look at, but you, you just you can't fix everything all at once. And so to me, I, I, I would start and just try to dig down and be as good as I possibly could on the defensive end. And if that means certain guys play more than others because of how they are on that end of the floor, I think you have to be willing to live with – you know, what it looks like on the other end of the floor if, if they can't give you certain things, but they're better on that end of the floor. That's just kind of the give and take that goes with it. Again, easy for me to say, uh, but, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see kind of what you get there. Yeah, and I, I really feel like you do – you have to set some some tangible benchmarks. It's not just like intangible rah-rah feelings. Let's start with the little things, tie your shoes tight and let's go. No, it is, and I agree with, with starting on the defensive end, what you're saying there, but it is something like – hey, this number of charges is our goal, something like that. Or offensively, hey, we want to hit these turnover benchmarks because that's been a yes. flaming sore for our basketball team. Or, hey, we want to take X percentage of our shots by this point in the game within 15 feet of the rim or whatever. We want to go to the basket. We want to have free throw attempts, whatever. I, I think it's a very real thing that, you know, as a coaching staff, you, you really point out statistically or whatever it may be, uh, some benchmarks for your team to visualize and, and kind of try to pursue and – yeah, I think it makes all the sense in the world that given what your identity is as a program, you've got to really look at that defensive end of things first. And if you do that defensively, you'll probably give yourself a chance. I mean, I think people would be surprised to see what you could do uh, with just returning to a really excellent defensive effort. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the word identity, play to your identity, because that, you know, like if you, if you just look at what we know, what Mark's, when, when his involvement with the program has been since Chris got here, 
that they've been a defensive minded outfit. That's just kind of who they are. And that's become a bit of an identity. And, and, and that's what people think about when they think about Texas tech basketball in the last four to six years. And I just don't know if that's what people think about right now, because you just haven't been as good as you've, you've been in years past, but I, you know, ultimately what we're saying is make the main thing, the main thing, you know, that that's the, the uh, end. Yeah. The, the, the end. Print the that, shirt. That's, yeah, that's right. Make the main thing the main thing, or keep the main thing the main thing. However you want to phrase it, but that that's where that's where they. Because I'm telling you, if if you'll lock in and get connected and and really sacrifice, if you will, uh, and because you know that's what that's what Mark kind of said to me after the game the other night. And he said it to the media too. He's like, we've got to you know sacrifice for the team and kind of get some individual goals aside. And, and be connected here. And it's, you know, that that's what's tricky about trying to coach college sports the, the, this day and age is that you got to trick guys sometimes into, like, buying into the whole group. So, you know, because there's so many situations out there in the, in the, in the college space right now. I got to get mine so I can get here. I got to get mine so I can go pro. I got to get this so I'm worth my NIL. I mean, there's a variety of different things that you can be fighting when you don't even know that that's what you're fighting, but that's what the kid is thinking about. Uh, And so trying to get everybody to sacrifice and buy in together because inevitably some guys look better than others when this happens. That's just, that's just sports. That's team. Um, but that, that's the tricky part about trying to coach, uh, college athletics this, you know, in, in 2023, but if they can, if he can start to tap into some of that and get him to do it, uh, then I think you'll, you'll like some results. Uh, and they, you know, and let's be honest, they almost, they could be sitting here three and one in conference. That's how close they were in those three games, but it's about winning the close ones. Cause most of these in the big 12, the Iowa state game was the exception, but most of these in the big 12, they're going to be you know, winnable at the end, if you play hard and you play well, and, and they did in those first three, and, and we all agree against Oklahoma, they probably didn't play very well, and yet they still had a chance to win that one, and and then Oklahoma turns right around, and they almost go beat Kansas at Kansas, so go figure. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about, it's comical to me that uh, for so many people, all of us, I would imagine, deal with this kind of stuff, particularly younger generation guys, as you're describing the college athlete uh, experience in this day and age, you know, pursuing individuality and your brand and all this stuff that you're putting before uh, the bigger picture when in reality, um, learning to work in the conditions where you're putting others before yourself and maybe dropping yourself uh, down a, a peg to be a part of a team as opposed to an individual is what in the big picture will likely set you up for individual success. I mean, it's completely the other way around as far as what you could learn, pick up, develop as either as a player or just a man, you know, during this time. But you're exactly right. I think when you talk about just the brand, everybody's got a brand now, right? It makes me want to puke, except for Joey McGuire's brand. Love your brand, buddy. <laughs> Not nauseous at that at all. Feeling real good about it. But it's a different kind of mindset that an athlete, most athletes at least, I think there are some that don't, but, uh, and I don't know if I should say most, but a lot show up with uh, this day and age as compared to once upon a time. With uh, a big challenge comes a big opportunity. We all know that. Can you imagine having success in this setting if you're Mark Adams and the Red Raiders would earn back a lot of goodwill? There's no doubt about that and re-energize uh, your Big 12 engine as you were very early on uh, in this long fight. So hoping for good things. Chris, we had a lot of good things here this week to discuss and always good to be with you talking Red Raiders sports, hoops, football, or any points in between, man. Thanks for the time. Hope you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll visit with you in a few days. Keep hope alive, brother. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, Horns down, guns up, all that stuff, and uh, we'll talk to you early next week. Yeah, and best of luck to everybody involved, and best of luck to that, uh, that other Longhorn head coach that lost his mind and called that pure little innocent tv boy a mother (laughs) effort on national television i'm sure he's unemployed now as he's been fired as anybody would be for an outburst like that representing such an institution so best of luck to him in finding his next job okay well he's all right i'm checking the news wire here it seems like he's still employed he must have won the bowl game i guess at least Oh, he no. lost the bowl game also? Yeah, he did. He lost it, yes. <laughs> Boy, there's some wild things going on in Austin, Texas.
All right, Chris, we'll visit with you on the other side. Everybody else, thanks for joining us this week on Locked on Texas Tech. For Chris, I'm Casey. We'll see you for the next one on Locked on Texas Tech.